Hello and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Colby and with me as always is Steve. And today we are going to wrap up our episode talk of season four of The Last Kingdom. Can you believe wow. it, Steve? I, I just can't believe it. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while here. It's yeah. been about a month now since it first came out. It's here it's, now, though. So it's it's even sweeter though now because you had to wait. You know, it's, yes. it's even sweeter yes. now. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we're gonna break down episode uh, ten today, and just so you know, coming up, we are going to have a total season four recap, and Steve and I are also going to give our superlatives. Okay, you know, we're gonna give out best bro, MVP, you name it. We got a lot of categories, and we're gonna break it down, so you don't want to miss that. Um, otherwise, thank you everyone so much for your support. We hope you guys um, stick with us and subscribe, like, and keep commenting. We love to read your comments uh, and everything like that. But uh, Steve, are you ready to, to rank episode 10? Yeah, let's rank episode 10 here. Uh, my rank for this episode, episode 10 of season four, mm -hmm. is an 8 out of 10 for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yours as well? Yeah, it's in this mine as well. <laughs> okay. It's it was pretty good. Um Yeah, I thought it was, it was good. Uh solid episode. I was kind of you know I kind of let down though by this being the last episode of the season mm -hmm. and we didn't get a little bit I just I felt like I needed a little bit more of a something. There's a lot of cool, I, interesting things that happen in this for sure. For sure. Not taking that totally. away. Totally. And it's, it's really, to me, kind of feels like it's this half of the season almost was setting up for season five. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. But it's, and we, we definitely need this groundwork laid because, um, you know, Alfred has left and all that. And it did make me excited for season five. Yes. I will and, say that. Yes. I, I guess the word a little bit anticlimactic, is that, would you agree? I would agree with that. That's exactly um, Especially there's a moment where we're going to get into the spoiler talk in a minute where I thought Uhtred was going to do like the coolest thing ever or something. And I don't know, not a whole lot amounted from it. Um, there's a battle that was cool and it, I, we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah, yeah. But um, overall, good episode. Great season. I mean, we go back to episode four. That, that's, that feels like a finale kind of episode, episode four. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really just... what I was kind of hoping for was like another episode four level of mm -hmm. excitement and peril and you know yeah um, and it's there's, it's still good some excitement yeah yeah there's some definitely some really good excitement in this but um not to that level of episode four i would say though yeah yeah exactly so but uh without further ado then do you want to get into the spoiler talk for the episode then cope yes okay so here we go starting off with rats <laughs> crawling all the ah! uh, <laughs> rats <laughs> they're crawling if you don't know that's a ghost song check it out ghost is awesome and there's a bunch of dead people outside the big walls that edward had built the fortifications of winchester and man these these wessex soldiers have just been getting their butts kicked for 30 days yes Yes. Oh my God. They show us it's been 30 days since Edward decided to just charge into a building with horses. <laughs> I know. And they show like a shot and there's just like a million arrows on the ground. Oh, yeah. Like it's crazy, man. Th 30 days. That's I, insane. I don't think that's really uncommon, though, for sieges no. in like real history, though. I think sure. it might even some, I think, might even last a year, year two. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But. I, yeah, these. It's, oh, there's definitely people who have been commenting that know their history, and we love that. Oh yeah, yeah. We love to hear it. We definitely love hearing the history behind that. But so. yeah, it's been it's kind of a damper though for Edward. Um, he he wanted that was his kingdom, Winchester, the capital pretty much of Wessex, the heart of England. Really, that's been lost. So it's kind of mm -hmm. depressing. We see the bros are just kind of like laying out in the grass. <laughs> They're not, they're like, this is dumb. <laughs> They've just been this like, this is chilling. so dumb. <laughs> Finn looks like he needs a haircut now. It's just like, it's almost yeah. like getting to like an Afro length. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we see, now remember from last episode when Aylesworth kind of goes toe to toe with Brita, she's like, Edward will burn this place to the ground. 
before he gives up land. And guess what? Here in episode 10, uh, they're lighting torches. She wasn't joking. She wasn't joking around. He's lighting torches and Utra sees this and he goes running and he kind of comes across Father Purely like, what is he doing? You know, mm-hmm. and Purely's like, I, there's no sense in talking to him. He, I couldn't convince him that this was a stupid idea. Uh, <laughs> Pure Lake has just had enough of it this season. He is just, I know. <laughs> Pure Lake, poor, poor father, Pure Lake, because it's either like he goes and there's politics all over the place, or his king doesn't listen to him, or his king gets mad at him for telling him the news, or he has to just sprint up hills. <laughs> but yeah, so here's another thing that plays into it, though, is Aldhelm comes and tells the news, like, yo, your sister just kicked butt. She's awesome. Everyone loves her. And, uh, and Edward's kind of. She's on day two bit. of her role, and she's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> and she's doing really good, really, really, really good. And uh, how are you doing? <laughs> no, but Ed, a big thing in this season is Edward is insecure, and he's a little bit jealous, it seems, of Ethelflaed. And Ethelflaed is a strong leader. People love her. She is um, she's a great leader. And he's trying to live up not only to his father, but also his sister. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, so there's a little bit of that. Like he says something like, um, well, don't let her be burdened by my failures or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and you can, you can just tell there's, there's some jealousy and um, a little bit of being shown up, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly. So he sends then a group of guys to tell the Danes that this is happening. That's how they find out that they're set in fire. Yeah. He sell, he sends uh Kedrick, and some other Saxon guys. <laughs> and he's like, we're going to burn the place down. And Brita just instantly shoots him. And just, just <laughs> shoots him. <laughs> that was hilarious. And that's the end of uh, Kedrick. Cedric? K- Kainrick, I think. Kainrick? Oh, sorry. Kainrick. The new guy, though. Think. New guy. Yeah. Someone, someone said uh, he's in The Witcher as well, too. Yeah, he Kong. is, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I didn't, I, you know, when we watched The Witcher, I never really noticed. And. I don't know. I didn't notice. I didn't pick up on it, but that's, that's a little cool detail. Yeah, I definitely want to but, um, watch that again and see where he's at. Uh, another thing I noticed is when um, everyone's going to try to talk sense into Edward when he comes up with this idea, and he's just totally going to do it. He's just, he wants to do it. And um, he says, you know, the Danes are going to burn in hell. You know, that's all he cares about. And he said that in response to something that Uchard said. And I just kind of noticed that he kind of sounded like his father when he said it because Uhtred said something and it was very Alfred like uh, Edward's response he's like and all the Danes will burn in hell I don't know um go, go back and rewatch the scene yeah. and you'll see a little bit of Alfred and Edward there I thought it was kind of cool Uhtred though wants to sh- talk to Sigtrigger he's like there's a reason they're not you know they're just kind of being quiet I think he wants to negotiate and Edward is not convinced of this at all so anyway uh, Aldhelm also said that she's going to be, uh, Ethelflaed is traveling south with her army. And again, Edward is determined to burn Winchester. Yeah. So he's like, so. oh, so we'll burn the place down. We'll get her, you know, before she's here, things will already start to be improving and then we can take it. And then it won't look as bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the yeah. brother just ruined the parents' <laughs> room here. And he wants to do like a little bit of cleanup before the sister comes by, who's on you know babysitting duty here tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as it looks. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so then we we actually cut to inside the walls of Winchester, and we see Steora is reading to Sigtrigger the Chronicles, and we find the chron- Yeah, we find out later that it was the Chronicles she's actually reading to. Him. Yes, she. she- he is like, does not want to read this book. You know what I mean? She's like, she's like, oh my God, I'm so bored. I'm gonna pull my eyes out. And uh, she's like, can we play another game? And I don't know, checkers or something. <laughs> it's like, uh, Dane checkers. There's some uh, Dane checkers or something. And um, Sig Trigger though wants to learn. He's like more interested in, in her reading. And um, she's like, she's like, I'm too hungry to read. He like brings over a loaf of bread. And a little bit of flirting going on, I'm sensing. Yeah, definitely. It's it's an interesting relationship that's developing here. Um, and she, it never it never feels like either too like that she's kind of been unhappy with her circumstances necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> you know, except for like maybe when she first got there. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, she's like been okay. <laughs> she's been wanting to get her own place for a while now. You know. I know. <laughs> and so she got the Palace of Winchester. So yeah. like, you know. 
<laughs> but um, also is, think about it, she always has been kind of identifying as a Dane because of her mother, you know, and even though her um, dad's Saxon, he's pretty much a Dane. Yeah, he dresses like a Dane and stuff like that and, and believes in a lot of Dane beliefs. So she's kind of come up as a Dane. Mm-hmm. And so now she's around other Danes and Sigtrigger is like the coolest one. Yes. So, <laughs> and he likes her. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's kind of a cool little scene. That's when a Brita comes in to tell Sigtrigger about the fire that's coming on and, and Brita wants to kill Steora. Sigtrigger is not, you know, going to let that happen. No, no, yeah, no. And he's like, I'll, I'll select a hostage. You go away. I feel like this keeps happening. Like Brita keeps thinking. Oh, we'll talk about it more later. Yeah. But like Brita keeps thinking she's in charge, and like he like, kind of lets her think that for a minute. But then like when it comes down to it, he's like, "No, nah, this is actually what we're gonna do." <laughs> yeah. You can tell she's frustrated that every time she's like, "This is what we're gonna do," and he's like, "No, no, 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 no." no. <laughs> <laughs> he always comes in at the last minute, and is like, "Actually, <laughs> I think what you but, mean uh, is." <laughs> yeah. And then we see Heston has taken Edith to some attic somewhere and a hiding place. And he tells her, he's like, I'm going to look after you. And I think we should get out of here. She doesn't really want to go with him. And he's like, I'll look after you. And he seems, this is the thing, is it doesn't seem like he's doing it because he's a Viking that just wants to do nasty Viking body. Things. Yeah. He does seem like he wants a beautiful wife, but... It's weird. Heston's changed, I feel like. So then we see Aylesworth and her group mm-hmm. in the uh, the crappy like poop room that they're in. <laughs> they aren't doing <laughs> I think it's like so the well. prayer room, right? Like the Yeah, that's that's where they used to pray all the time. You're right, you're right. <laughs> they're it doesn't look very pleasant in there. They're not doing hot. It doesn't even look like it's got AC <laughs> or do. anything like they that. You know what I mean? There. The rest of the palace yeah. does and they just have the door shut so it's not <laughs> getting out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you see the electric bill last oh month, guys? No way. No. Yeah. We didn't do any of that. That wasn't us here in the prisoner room. Okay. <laughs> Prison room isn't paying this month. Yeah. And they talk about if they need to end their lives or like, oh, I, I'll show oh, you it gets a way. dark. With a cloth, you it's... can do it, says uh, Ethel Helm. Ethel Helm. And then uh, yeah. Ells with chips. I want, she's I'm, like, I'm curious. How, how does that work with a cloth? <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> I was just waiting. Oh, I was like, explain. <laughs> Do you suffocate yourself? Learned a way with a claw. Yeah. Do you swallow it? I am. That sounds horrible. It sounds like, like there's got to be a better way than that. <laughs> it's like, I'll show you a way with Break a- the glass and a pebble or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's horrible anyway els was like oh i i i, I can one up you there uh <laughs> and she tells about poison purple flower a purple plant in the courtyard yeah poisonous flower that's tasteless and will definitely it'll kill you and um they're like why do you grow those things and she's like for this very situation ales with ales with has force and vision abilities i don't know how Okay, there's a there's a picture Eliza Butterworth posted before season four came out, I think, and after they shot. So I don't know if she did this on purpose, but she's like holding these purple flowers next to her face, just like on her normal Instagram. It's just Eliza. Mm-hmm. So I went, <laughs> I went back and commented saying like, oh, don't eat those. Is <laughs> <laughs> that foreshadowing so, um, maybe? Mm-hmm. I wonder if she did it to foreshadow. She's like, oh, no one's going to know what this means. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe she just thought the flowers are beautiful and... Uh, I wanted a picture with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very morbid conversation there. And Sig Trigger comes in and I love this part, dude. I love this part because Sig Trigger comes in and is like, all right, just stop messing around. Give me Edward's air. All right. And they kind of like, Ale Flood is first like, he's the for- firstborn right there. Take him. And Ale's just like, he's going to think you're lying uh, if you say that. So why not say that? And when she said that, um, that makes gonna make Citrigger think that Ellsworth is lying if it's a double negative with um if you turn okay and then if I know that you know carry the two carry the two 
I'm confused again, man. So then Ale uh, Flood is like, okay, I should just shut up. I don't know what to say because uh, to protect my son. And then I love this. Ethelston is like, you should take me. I am the firstborn. Just so like, mm, I just this kid. How old is this kid? I you know. Yeah, he looks probably eight or younger. And and the look on Sick Trigger's face when he says it, Sick Trigger like smiles as if like this kid is cool because mm-hmm. he has a code. Or like I like. He's a kid, yeah. and that's he's like that's something he's like, we saw I with, like this kid. Yes, yes, we saw this with Erdwolf. He doesn't respect guys mm. who are dishonorable and, uh, you know, yeah. selfish. And he, yeah. he sees, oh, this kid, he's got he's got some gahunas on him too. Here, you know, he's just he's like, take me, I, you know. I know. I loved that look on Six, Six Trigger's face after he said that. He's like, "You're cool, dude." He's a cool Dane. Cool Dane. He's a cool Dane. Love the guy. Love Sig Trigger. He's cool. So anyway, he's like, I'm going to take them both since y'all are dumb. And uh, <laughs> then we hear the horn. Sick Trigger got on the trombone and calls. And then Sick Trigger brings up the boys. A little Joker choice here. Oh, yeah. Either a little, you choose it, the, uh, the boat that blows up or I blow them both up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he says, you choose you whichever kid you want, and then you can have that one and you retreat. Yep. Or I kill them both and we keep fighting. And Edward's like, this sucks. I'm oh, walking away. And just, here we go. Just yeah, goes he just to leaves. His tent. Yeah, just nothing. Straight to his tent. Beeline. And, he, and just like oh my god, and he screams and it's silent. He though. screams. It. It's silent and it's so loud. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. And you're just like, oh man. Yeah, exactly. Like Steve right there. Do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he goes into the state of. Like he's a little kid yes. and he like he's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I he's can't like, do so this. I can't do this. And he's like crying. What do I do? He purely comforts him. Can someone tell yeah. me what to do here? Because I can't. Ah. And yeah. Oh, but- I just, I'm already getting like the, the feeling of like, I can't even imagine how he felt inside. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? I feel like that's the oh, first, man. other than him in the, the cage with Uhtred after Uhtred got beat. I feel like this scene is like the first time we've really got to see how Edward is actually feeling. And to when we see uh, everyone talking at him in the first uh, few episodes, I think it's a great bro moment here. I don't know if it's my best bro moment. Um, as we keep talking, I'll, I'll make up my mind, oh, but man. great bro moment purely. He just hugs the guy, just hugs him. He just hugs him. And man, can you imagine being in that spot to choose between a child Uhtred is talking with young Uhtred and he's pretty much like, man, I'd be broken too. If I was in those shoes, if I had to pick between you guys, my kids, and young Uhtred's like, I would want you to pick Steora. He's like, I can look after myself. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right. Young Uhtred has come so far since we first met him where he, we didn't really, he's kind of annoying at first. Yeah. I've really grown to like him. I still like Siora more. You know, I know you're not supposed to have favorites. Yeah. But I do. <laughs> no, Steyr is just Steyr is awesome. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's cool. Cool character development with young Uhtred, I think. Yeah. Uhtred here decides he's not gonna make uh, Edward have to make this choice. I'm the Dane Slayer. They're gonna want some reputation, so let me offer. Edward's myself. like, you're not valuable to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it's just like, dang. Okay. <laughs> I know. He's like, he's like, he's like they won't, valuable. they won't accept that. You're not that valuable to you. <laughs> that's just, it's like, dude, Uhtred is so much. He helped you become king, like make that transition. He was kind of a mentor to you. Mm-hmm. God, he's not that valuable to you. How? I don't know, dude. Was, Edward, was, Edward this season still makes me mad sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, it was kind of a burn. It was a good, funny burn, though. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's like, you're not that valuable to me, so that was a stupid idea. <laughs> Edward agrees and says, if if he die, and he says something nice to Uhtred here. He's like, Uhtred, if you die doing this, uh, I will make sure that you will be remembered. And he says, you know, if this succeeds, Wessex will be in your debt again. Again? Uh, again. Oh, my God. How many times is, uh, go all day about that. So, anyway, um, Aldhelm asks about <laughs> He's like, so so. what's the plan, guys? And the boys are behind Uhtred. He's like walking toward Winchester and they're like, he hasn't got a plan. <laughs> what plan? This is what he looks like when he doesn't have a plan. 
And Uhtred just kind of says, you know, I believe I can end this. This is kind of odd for Uhtred, I think, here. Just, you know, we've, we've definitely seen him, you know, do a lot of risky things before. But as far as like a Captain America level of, you know, self-sacrifice, this is really the first time I think we've seen anything like this, you know. Yes. Um, it, it, it just felt kind of different. I mean, he is getting older. It's clear this season he is definitely trying to make some more steps for Wessex. Uh, mm-hmm, and England mm-hmm. as a whole was, you know, with Ethel fled and, and now, but it just, I don't know. It just felt kind of like, Oh, this is kind of odd that he's just going in. He has nothing to gain here. Any other time yeah. he's put his neck out in line, he usually has something to gain. You know, I, I said this before yeah. when he went to be out to fight Heston in three, he was going to get scathed though. You know, he, oh, yeah. he helped the Dane army slow down that winter, but then he was getting scathed. You know, he helped Alfred in season one, uh, you know, have that battle. Thinking of the promise of Bevenber, right? Thinking of Bevenber, though. So, exactly. So, but this is the first one. He, I can't see anything here that he's looking to get out of, you know, yeah, out of this situation. So, and most of his life has been so invested in, you know, and when, you know, Wessex and Alfred's, Alfred and his kids, you know, so... Yeah, it's it's really a crazy, you know, decision and a, and a really powerful moment when he goes, walks toward the gates and he goes and tries to make a deal and they make the deal. And then they cut to like the gates opening and um, Ethelston's like, first one there gets to be king and the boys start <laughs> sprinting toward Edward. <laughs> first one to dad gets to be king. First one there. <laughs> Elford, Elford is just like way far behind because he's younger. He's just <laughs> no, but they do run, and there's a really cool moment with the boys and hugging the father. Oh, it's, it's super cool. That was great. Yeah, and he, you know, and this is the first time like he's hugged. We haven't seen him have show like any affection toward either of them, Elford, like at all. A little bit. Ethelston, he was starting yeah, to grow on. Right. Especially remember Ethelston brought him the doll, and he was like you know is he a good king and he's like yes he's like you so a little bit of relationship building there but now i think with the prospect of losing them both like all that crap just gone you know what i mean just he he is so happy to have his boys exactly you know exactly so cool moment there big hug and (laughs) and athelston won so he gets to be (laughs) and that's how years later Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> that's why he became the king. <laughs> People don't know that about, you know, it all went back to that moment. Another interesting <laughs> thing too, I noticed here for the first time, Uhtred's sheath on his back has no strap. It's just like t- sewn into his armor or something, I guess. Cool. He has no strap on it. It just seems like it would be harder to get your sword into. You'd want a little bit of give. Exactly. To be able to... Like You have to like... Yeah twist your back now to get you move you know move your scapula in you know it's just yeah but your biceps are so big you can't <laughs> wash behind your ears anyway so <laughs> i'm sure utrid can get a little bit more flexibility <laughs> you're right you're right you're right <laughs> your biceps are big but no <laughs> so anyway i really like this next scene Okay, because this is a scene where Uhtred is walking into Winchester, okay, and it's empty now. People are running out of the street into their homes, looking out the cracks of their window, closing their doors. The women seem afraid. The men seem afraid. And then you think about it. It's like many many of these are sick triggers Danes, right? They came from Ireland, okay? So probably a lot of them, this is their first time here in this, in this new nation. And the only thing they've heard about this guy walking through the door is that he is the Dane Slayer. <laughs> and he, seriously, think about yeah. it. Because they haven't had the other, other point of view that some of the Danes that have been in Wessex and uh, Mercia and, and the English kingdoms have had where they see that Uhtred, you know, he has killed Danes, but he's also just been kind of in between yeah you know? yeah he's a lot of the, the danes even though they thing. call him a dane slayer they still don't think of him as a legendary sort of figure or something yeah but the, he's been like to me this showed that he's been really become a legend in like in the tales of the dane slayer mm. 
you know, a tale, that he, a, a name he doesn't necessarily want. So I thought that was very kind of interesting that everybody was running and looking scared and wanting to get a look at this legendary figure walking through the mm, gates. Yeah. And they were, they were like, there was like he was the boogeyman or something. They were super scared. Or the Grim Reaper walking through town. He should have been, you know, they, you know classic season two, you know, uh, ghost Utrecht, you know, walking through. I know, the he should have had the skull. Skull <laughs> on. The skull. Put up. Yeah. Martin, yeah. I'm here for your sword. And so then, anyway, they uh, bring him to the courtyard. They bring the prisoners, actually, to the courtyard to Sick Trigger. is like, hey, look what I traded for the kids. Check it out. Looky, I gave looky. them... I gave them my level 100 Mewtwo and they gave me, you know, <laughs> Uhtred. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got a Pikachu, a Charmander. No, but. Uh, I didn't they, get why he brought them out here. The Aylesworth. Yeah. I didn't get why he brought them out. I know that Aylesworth, you know, Aylesworth here, she picks up that flower. So I get for the plot. Well. Why she needed that, but. Well, she didn't, it was, uh, I think it was. A Ethelhelm told the guard to get it. Oh, okay. But yeah, Ethelhelm had told the guard I was to still get like, it. Why did he just like bring him out the show? Look who I got. Utrid. Yeah. They do. They do. Um, I think they just want to show off the trade. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Did I did I get a better deal <laughs> than the, the kids? <laughs> how many how many Danes could this guy kill compared to those kids? <laughs> I don't know. We don't know what um, Ethel's thing can do yet. But Brita comes right, y'all, oh, man. I am okay. We'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but Brita, Brita comes out and she wants Utrid. She's like, tie him. Here's another moment where Sig Trigger just like is like, yeah, nah. <laughs> She's like, tie him and crucify him so he can die like the Christian he wants to be. And Sig Trigger is just like, yeah, nah. Let's bring him to the hall. <laughs> or, I just want to chat with him. Or nah. <laughs> And she gets and she gets really mad. She's like, "Come on, You're like you, <laughs> you promised, you promised." <gasps> no, and and he's like, "I, you'll have you'll have him when I'm done with him, right?" And he Here's promises. Sword. He, and he gives her the sword. Get, he gives her serpent's breath, and uh, they go to the hall and. <laughs> Sneak attack! Uchard's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ocho just admiring the artwork, and Signature just comes in, just throwing, just trying to slice him. <laughs> no, I don't think he was actually trying to hit him. He yeah, was just trying to test him. I think yeah, I think he know. just wanted to see his reflexes here. You know, yeah. we we do it. We grade like from zero to three plus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when I have like a ninety-two-year-old woman, I might just go in swinging with my sword or axe, <laughs> just because it gives me like a really good sense of their reactionary balance and then once they see you their anticipatory balance as well mm. uh, it's yeah yeah a lot see, of different are they using it are they using ankle strategy hip strategy what what you know <laughs> so utred's using all the all the trunk strategy here he's just oh yeah and i love how he like lock he doesn't have a weapon but he still locks him up yes he like yes. He does some cool moves and he just locks him up like this and he's like impressed, you know, he's like, wow, okay, you got some moves. Got some moves. And, but he does say, he's like, obviously you're not trying to kill me because like you're slow. <laughs> 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 they kind of get into some uh, talk about the Chronicle. He's like, yeah, your daughter's been reading me the Chronicle and uh, it's a pretty good read. I recommend it. Um, but you're not in it. What's the deal with that? You know, you <laughs> talk about reputation and stuff, man, but. Uh, Were you even there if it wasn't in the Chronicle? You know, yeah. if it, <laughs> did it even happen if it wasn't in the Chronicle, you know? For real, man, for real. But anyway, he does like, he he starts like, I've heard a lot of stories about you from your daughter, Steora. And he's like, but my favorite is how you lost Bebember. Uchid's like, do you want to die? <laughs> and, no, but he's like, no, nah, he actually uses this to go, you know, but you know what? I've lost my home too. So maybe that puts us on common ground. And Uhtred's like, knew it, knew it, knew you wanted to negotiate. I knew it. Tell Nobody believed me. Tell no one believed me. <laughs> he's like, hold on, I gotta take, I gotta take a video of this. And he's like, <laughs> say what you just said. <laughs> say what you just said. <laughs> Six Trigger pretty much is like, I want peace and I want land. And he's like, why didn't you just talk to Edward about this? He's like, I want peace and land. Now that's new for us for the Danes. We. We um we normally hear 
Silver and land. Silver and land. We have silver and land. Silver and land. <laughs> silver and land. <laughs> and now Citra Gear is like, peace and land. Peace and land. And um, Uhtred's like, that's weird. <laughs> no, but it's cool. It's cool. It is. Citra Gear is a cool ass Dane. So yeah. So meanwhile, they're having this conversation and they're starting to talk negotiations. They, you can see Heston's spying through the door. He's looking through the door and Brita comes up and is like, are you spying on them? And he's like, no, that's cool. I spy on everyone. So <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> he says, um, Sick Trigger's trying to um, strike a truce with Uhtred. And Heston's like, this is good. Like, like, you know, we can stop fighting. We can get land. We can just be happy. He says, land and silver. Life. <laughs> land and sil let silver and land silver, silver and, and land, land. Something, something something silver, silver and land. land i haven't seen rudolph in a long time but i think that's all you need to know classic song it's a classic song <laughs> and uh <laughs> anyway Brita's pissed about this <laughs> so mad that she like throws this awesome sword that she has right over the wall bad sir and i'm like breath. if i had that sword are you kidding me even if i wasn't going to use it i'd put that on my mantle or something That'd be somewhere in, in the house huge collector collector's item right there i think she is frustrated too because it's clearly that his intention isn't to give utra to her when they're done right you know right and this was like kind of like i like almost like a promise like look he's yours you get his sword and then look at it like this as well it's like sick trigger this is also like first time meeting your girlfriend's dad for him so <laughs> so just come in swinging with a sword <laughs> show you're cool show you can defend you're yourself cool. and and yeah. her if it needs to be. and the dad is like the dad's like all right all right let's have okay, some beers, cool. let's have some beers. Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to give his girlfriend's dad to this psychopath mm -mm. that breed has become <laughs> the bros then we see them they 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 found the sword then the next day and they're all like huddled yeah, around yeah, yeah, it yeah. like like trying to figure out like what does this mean is he dead is that why the sword's out there but edward sees it says he's dead his mission's failed we need to make some moves real quick there's just a small scene in between there where ellsworth does take a sip of the poisonous drink Ooh. Yeah, so remember earlier when in the courtyard when they did that uh, show off of Uhtred, Ethelhelm trades like a nice ring to this Dane. He's got like a nice ring on and he's like, you like this ring? Get me that flower. Good trade? <laughs> I think that's a good trade. <laughs> <laughs> so he had gotten that. We kind of see him say to Aelflaed earlier, you know, take a sip and then give it back and like don't drink anymore after that, okay? because I'm going to poison the shit out of this. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and so... <laughs> then we see Ellsworth, like, get up and take a sip out of it. And, yeah, and then we're back, like, we we're talking with Edward, and Athelfled has come. Actually, she, she goes up to Edward and is pretty much says to him, we'll do whatever you want. <laughs> and Althelm's like, Althelm is like... Oh my God. <laughs> He's like, what? There's innocent lives in there. This guy wants to burn the town down. Yeah. You crazy, crazy Alfred people. You crazy Jeez, Alfred uh, offspring here. Yeah. The innocent people. Let's give Uhtred more time. And Edward's like, Uhtred is dead. And Ethelfled is yeah. just like, uh okay let's yeah. just burn the place down then burn it down <laughs> yeah they even bring up like um Aylesworth's still in there and i think ethel flood something like well she'll have come to peace at the, by now and you know she'll she'll be cool with this believe me they probably <laughs> they probably already said this at one point like when they're all together you know like if the kingdom ever gets captured again you burn this mother down doesn't matter who's <laughs> in here <laughs> you burn it down okay mom okay just make sure my baseball card collection gets out first. <laughs> we can't lose that. I had my old 800 Clemente in there. <laughs> it's a rookie card. Rookie card. <laughs> he wasn't born for another 1,100 years, but still. <laughs> um, anyway, 
they talk in strategy and, and Edward's like, yeah, we can use this flame and the smoke will cover our, our approach. You know, we're going under the smoke and all the time I'm like, but if the wind blows any other direction, it's going to, we're going to be left exposed. Yeah. And he's like, and, we'll fill it with shit and lime. <laughs> then it'll be better. It's always better with that. And Aldhelm is like, let's just give Uhtred more time. Have you seen seasons one and three? My God, he's going to figure it out. And Edward's like, he's dead. He is dead. So they just cut to throwing the sacks of fire. And they're just... It's game on. Wave after... Yeah, yeah. They, they've got like these ropes and um, sacks with, like you said, what's in it? Lime and... Shit. And shit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they're running up with like shields over. Even like the boys do a, do a wave of it yeah, too. And young they, Uhtred, they like are in a line. Young Uhtred, yeah. So like they've gotten everyone all in, and they're like they they like hurl the the sacks to like start this the fire to like create the uh, cover, Smoke and the Danes too. retaliate. They like pour what is it tar? Yeah, they pour? they're pouring. It's flammable though, and it like ca- causes them to be like set on fire Mm -hmm. which is cool yeah it's a a cool little battle we start getting here i don't know why i always love scenes like lord of the rings you name it like i love like siege scenes and storming the castle and i love it i think this is the first one i've seen where they're throwing you know bags of human shit and lime to you know make a smoke screen (laughs) and i know it's pretty it's pretty cool it is cool it is kind of cool but here's where heston is fleeing and he's trying to bring Edith with him. And she doesn't want to go with him. And he's like, many, many, many women have grown to appreciate my charms. Give it a year in or that, two. In that awesome Heston voice that, that Yepabek Larson does so well. Pulls her out and there's like the, all the battle and smoke around. And eventually, you know, the last thing we see uh, for the, before the rest of the battle, you know, she just runs off away from him. And he's like, come on, now you're going to die. And she's like, I don't care. I belong here. And she's like, Fine, you ungrateful bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. <laughs> so I, well, that's the thing, too, is he probably could have just kidnapped her, too. Yeah, yeah. He could have. He didn't. It's not like he just wanted to help her and, and have a beautiful wife. Yeah. But <laughs> I just felt like that was like a like an Eric Cartman moment there. <laughs> <He's> like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Fine, you agree, little bitch. <laughs> Runs away. But but there's an awesome shot next, and it shows like the Danes, like it shows people vomiting from the smoke and like coughing, and Brita is just staring, mean mugging it, looking over like the wall and not even phased by the smoke. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because she is just turning into a monster. But like, yeah, men are vomiting and stuff. It's crazy. This is very effective. I'm, this is like really cool. This is the first time I've seen anything like this in a show or anything. It's like, this makes like so much sense. Other than, you know, the fact that you would then have to go into that yourself is maybe the only right. downside. Why? But then like, right. like it's going to throw everyone off in there. You know what I mean? Like they're, yeah, they're going to interesting strategy being man. in there. They're going to want to get out. The big thing with the Danes is they have like all these archers and that's been, they can't, they can't make anything. So if they have this, this smoke covering, then hopefully they can not be seen by those archers. Yeah. They make their charge. Yeah. So they, they do, they make the charge and it kind of reminds me of the battle at Dunholm where they, they do a, uh, you know, like a turtle shell ram onto the gates. Uh, but at oh. Dunholm, it didn't work. They didn't break through the gates. Stiapa had to we come in Stiapa. and open the gate for them, even though they're pounding on it. He has to open the doors for them to get in. But here they actually Yeah, but this, break this was a bigger ram. Yeah, bigger ram. I, <laughs> so. I noticed, too, uh, even though this one was more effective, it, I felt like their covering wasn't, like, as good. Like, their shield wall. No, I didn't think covering. so. Like, there was a lot of, like, heads out, you know, people... It was still cool. It was awesome. But I was just like, this yeah. it like it doesn't seem like as protective as that turtle. Those were Danes that did it. Um the first turtle at Dunholm. Ooh, These are Saxons mostly. You're right, you're right. You're, you know, so Danes are better at that shield you know, wall. They definitely they're are. They're way better at the shield wall. Like they, they learned that when they're five, the shield wall, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> like for real though. And so they <laughs> they but how often do we see a battering ram charge actually work? I think. You know, I like 
always like seems like a strategy I'm always frustrated with. I was like, I mean, come on, like, I don't know. No, you're right. It's it seems like only the bad guys, if they use it, it ever works. <laughs> it never seems like the good guys when they use it, it works. Yeah. Vikings or the Last Kingdom shows Edith getting like ca- caught in this crowd, like getting trampled pretty much, mm-hmm. and a cool battle breaks out actually. Yeah, the really cool beats as. Pretty much the people first in line are like Aldhelm, Ethelfled, and the bros. And they break in and the cool Citric beats, cool Finnan beats. Um, and then cool Aldhelm, like, I don't know if he, with the butt of his knife, hits a guy and Ethelfled comes in against a tree to finish this guy off. But, like, it's cool. Edward, too. Edward, oh, Edward, how could I forget? Edward. Edward's getting some cool beats here in the beginning. And Uhtred is, like, goes to Citric or he's, like, let me talk to the king. Let me see if we can stop this because, you know, he doesn't know about our deal. I forgot to text him. And so we <laughs> Sig Trigger is like, yeah, but if you kill anybody, like, ah, uh, you're a dead man. Yeah, he, and he, he sends like a couple of his men. He sends like the him. biggest Dane next to him. He's like, yeah, he's like, if he him. kills a Dane, you kill him. And like Utra yeah. just like looks up at this guy. <laughs> yeah. And then Utra goes through. This is awesome. I mean, come on. Unarmed again non-lethal takedowns you know and he like takes a guy's shield he like captain america throws it (laughs) (laughs) it bounces off the wall comes back to him and no (laughs) he makes his way to edward and he's he starts yelling at him and he he tells him hey we need to stop i made a deal let's stop killing each other and talk And and i was thinking about this imagine you're in a battle and people are trying to kill you and somebody comes and taps on your shoulder. like, hey, can I have a second? <laughs> can I have a second of your time to talk about a proposition that I have? <laughs> I'm breathing in lime and human shit. <laughs> yeah. How hard would that be to like listen to something like that and, and change your mind when you're already like adrenaline filled yeah. rage? You know what I mean? It still feels like the way they shot it though and everything, it, it still yeah. feels like it's like, like he's screaming in his face. Like, yeah, he's like like using his yes. arms and everything. Oh no, I'm not taking saying that it's necessarily like w- couldn't happen. Oh no, yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to like put myself in Edward's shoes. Like, it'd be how hard that must be to to turn off the know, animal brain and put on the human brain turn on again. A rational, yeah. So anyway, he starts like he's... signaling them the Citra. Get like, hey, hey, hold up. He 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 sees Uhtred waving him down, doing the YMCA at him, yeah. and he's like, <laughs> he's like, all right, and he makes the best and the first shield wall call of this well, season he does two of them dude yes well it starts it's one's like shield wall i kind of get everyone's attention and then it's and he was like <clears throat> sorry i had something stuck in my throat <laughs> let me try this again <laughs> shield wall Oh my god! I can't do it. No, I mean, well, who could? I mean, come on. It's so good. That thing. Ah, oh. and then Edward comes with his own. That was really awesome too. Yeah, he does a great shield wall call as well. Oh man, they hit us with the back to back like shield walls like that. How you do that to us? Come on! I've been waiting. You make us wait this whole season, and then you do two in a row <laughs> as, i'm just like as soon as i saw it the first time i sent you that snap and i was like finally <laughs> i know <laughs> my favorite shield wall call is probably uh, at dunholm it's either when ragnar he calls shield wall for the turtle shell when they're with the battering yeah. ram or utred when he calls the shield wall when they're in dunholm and they're squaring off against carton's men like ragnar's group just came in yeah. with and they reunited with Uhtred's and shield wall. And they all just, yeah, they just corner of Carton. And Carton is done at this point, you know. He's done. He's but like done. Ragnar's shield wall was so like, just so Viking and awesome. Oh my God. He is like, Ragnar is so freaking Viking. I mean, come on, dude. That guy just, uh, yeah. My, my favorite still, well. There's so many good ones. And I really like the one at BM for that while it's closing, Siegfried breaks through. That just the way that was filmed. Yes, yes, yes. Also, season three, episode one, there's a really cool shot where like the camera's like backing up and it's just showing the shields like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting in line. It's Ooh, a cool shot yeah, too. The first episode, yeah. But, of season three. But the first episode of season one, 
the very first shield wall we see. I love that because, well, it's the first one we see. And also I love when like Ubba's like ease mm -hmm. and they just start taking steps Ooh. back and the men start Ooh. falling. Ooh. And how can we forget all of the great training scenes? They're te Uhtred's teaching the Saxons. Yes, yes. Breaking it down. He hits his shield. Lower level, middle level, level uh, upper level. That was like oh. classic. That's like that was like that episode was teaching us how to make shield walls, you know, in case we yeah, didn't. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> all the shield walls we had made before that were just not. Did they, not work. They're more like shield fences, is what we were yeah. doing. And that's that's mm -hmm. kind of what happens here in the courtyard, though. Great call, but it's still I still need my like three level. You know, guy protects the legs, guy protects the upper body, yeah. guy protects the head, shield wall. Yeah. Um, but like, it was a great I agree. shield fence here to divide. I just, I just thought of one somebody said. It was also the one at um, that the, the nunnery where Skade's there and they just need to, like, create one to protect yes, while they talk. It's like a negotiation another, shield wall. It's like wall. a little dome. Yeah. yeah, a negotiation shield wall. That was also cool. Sorry. No, 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 no. That was an awesome one. I like um, a little cool one. But yeah, these shield walls are not, you know. I think it's different though when you have to form a shield wall after you've already been battling for a while compared You're right. to You're right. just starting with one. Yeah, good point. Um, they both yell shield wall and they go and they meet in the middle. And Sushigir's like, well, hey, check out the place I've got here. <laughs> you want to want me to show you around? <laughs> well, Ethel Flood's like, there will be no negotiations till we see the captives. And they like open the door and like, there you go. Close it real quick. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Aylesworth, you can tell she turns around, but she's in pain. She looks like crap. They're trying to strike a bargain. Six Trigger wants Effowich. Edward is like, now nah, I'll give you East Anglia though. You know, that way you'll have like the, um, the dirty part of England. Yeah. You'll have, <laughs> but this way you'll be able to like have the ocean for your, um, your boats and you go back home. Yeah. Or your people that go come back over home. on boats. Yeah. And um, he's like, yeah, that all sounds great, but no, I want Effowich. <laughs> what I want is Effowich. Meanwhile, Uhtred's like, eh, I don't want to hear about this. I'm going to go find Steora. And while he's on his way to find Steora... Sneak attack! <laughs> Brita attack. Brita attack, and Uhtred's still doing his dodging skills. Just like, whoa. Can't get me. Can't touch this. Da, na, na, na. Yeah, but he wasn't a three plus this time. He was more of like yeah. he's more of a one or three two. Pluses. Cause she or two plus yeah. Stab yeah. in on him. The first she time. gets a little stab in on him. Yeah, man. She does. Ugh. He still does some sweet dodging though. He does. Oh yeah. After that though, he goes. He his reflexes. He gets some like hypertonia. You know, like spontaneously comes on here. <laughs> yeah, but um. <laughs> Uhtred, oh, earlier when they met, Uhtred's like, I had no idea about the kid, by the way. Is it Knut's? And um, like, Brito was like, it's my, it's mine. Okay. It's She's like, Knut didn't know about it either. It's my kid. And this is, I, I kind of mentioned to you before where I can see, and she's like, I'm going to raise him to hate the Saxons. Mm -hmm. And I think this every could be some Saxon. foreshadowing every Saxon. So this could be some foreshadowing because Brita definitely could like, we saw her raising Canute's kids earlier, helping teach them about the Dane ways, and she could definitely raise a warrior if it, if it's a. I mean, either way, she she could raise a warrior. She could definitely mess up a kid's brain. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, like, uh, She'll raise we, a good little serial killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that I think is going to possibly take part in the future. Yeah. And um, he basically just, like, disarms her though, and lets her disarms her. Go. her. Yeah, and he's like, just leave, you know. Oh, and she says a great, uh, another like Star Wars ish line. She's like, if you don't yes. kill me, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Yeah, because <laughs> he he pinned her to the wall. Yeah, and then he doesn't kill her again. What a jerk! <laughs> what a dick! <laughs> Come on, dude. How many times does she have to ask before you kill her? I you know, I find that yeah, right. Know. Anyway, <laughs> but she. Does, I thought the same thing, like, except it's the opposite, I guess, in Star Wars. Yeah, it's it's more like it's like if you strike if you strike me, me down, down, I'll become more powerful than you'll ever know. But yeah. she says like, yeah, she like if you don't kill, better me, kill me or stronger, I would come stronger. Yeah, yeah. and um, but I was like, Star Wars like, line, <laughs> Star Wars line, right there. 
<laughs> Uhtred's like, just leave. Get out of here. Quick. <laughs> Shows Osford taking care of that wound. And Uhtred just like, ow, hits him in the head. I know. Smacks him. <laughs> like, dude. He's like, be careful. It's like, what? <laughs> I was like, Uchra, that's kind of an anti-bro moment right I know, there. that's an anti. You lose a bro point for that you one. You lose there, a bro Uhtred. point. Even Uchra loses a bro point. Um, but anyway, uh, Ethelfled and Edward come back. They had struck a bargain. And Uchra's like, tell me. And they're like, well, we gave him Ethelwich. And um, Aldhelm is like, well, that's a good idea because that way you guys hold all three kingdoms. Um, and there's no humiliation with that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Ethelfled's like, but... <laughs> Also, so they, he wants your daughter, Stiora. And Uchra's like, well, you said no because you, yourself, Ethelfled, you know how bad it is to have kids in politics. And bargaining with kids, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and Edward too, you know? And like... She's like, yeah, but it wasn't mine this time, so... She also said, like, she's not a child anymore. Stewart's not a child. Yeah, but... Still. This is... <laughs> I'm really ticked off with Ethelflaed here, man. Ethelflaed, ever since she became the Lady of Mercia, has... Don't get me wrong. Ethelflaed's still awesome, but she has... Actually, even before she became Lady, when she, like, didn't like that Uhtred was going to be the Lord. Yeah. She's kind of, like... Ah, she, I've lost, she's lost a few points with me, too. Yeah, ex- also with me. I, because I definitely wanted her to be a leader of Mercia back. No doubt. Be- before all the, the wheels started turning with Uhtred, I was like, I want her. That's who I want. She'd be the best one. Totally. But ever totally. since it's even like been in the talks that Uhtred was going to be there. And then when she got it, like, you know, she was being a jerk to Uhtred. Uh, she was being a jerk to Edith. Yeah. Uh, and now here again, it's like Uhtred who ran across the country with uh you know COVID-19 with her daughter you know is is now like no way you know we 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 got rid of your daughter so this could work yeah I mean yeah eventually though Uhtred then he goes to his daughter after this yes it's a great scene great scene between father and daughter here she's he's like guess what I told him no (laughs) and she's like come on (laughs) she's like but I want to go uh, I want an exciting life. I don't want to watch these kids anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a time of my life where I need to be going on adventures and exploring and, and have a, what's she say? Have like a future that's not certain or something. Yeah. Cause he says to her, he's like, you know, I've sacrificed enough for Wessex yeah. or England or something like that, that like, you don't have to go. And she's like, well, yeah. I haven't sacrificed anything yet. So like yes. something along those lines cool line though. and that cool she's, line. she wants to give something she wants to she, earn yeah. you know yeah. some. And she's like she's like dad please let me be a prisoner please <laughs> let me be a prisoner <laughs> cool lines cool father daughter moment things are starting to wrap up here in the season go to finnan and edith um he's like taking care of her and he's like wrapping his arms around her this is the only way to wrap this bandage okay <laughs> <laughs> And, and hasn't um, had a girlfriend since we've seen him. And then he instantly gets the hottest one possible. <laughs> it's Finnan. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> and she says something like, maybe her family honor was restored now. You know? mm-hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Cut to Ellsworth and Ethel fled. She's like helping her mother to bed and Ellsworth falls. Yeah, we don't hear what happens with her. Uh, we hear she's ill, though, and she's not. We, they they don't say she's dead. You know, Edward comes out to Uhtred. He's like, she's fallen ill. You know, I'm worried they've claimed another life. And Uhtred's like, nah, yeah. she's way too tough. You know, like, she's, but it is kind of left. You don't, we don't definitively yeah. know. Is she going to die? We, yeah, in a few minutes, we see, like, the last scene of her is just kind of laying still in bed. Yeah. So we don't know what, you know, obviously they could kill her off, but... I mean, how do you not want Eliza Butterworth around around the set? I don't know. She's freaking awesome. I want her here so, right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Edward asks Uhtred to protect Ethelston. You know, you can teach him how to become a warrior. And you can teach him about Northumbria. And he says, Northumbria is the, the last, last kingdom. kingdom. Sweet. Sweet. Yes, I love it, man. They, and think in season one, 
Is it somebody says that Winchester Wessex is Wessex, the last kingdom? Wessex is the last kingdom. Yeah, that's the last. That was back in season one. That was the only kingdom the Danes hadn't conquered was Wessex. And uh, but but since then, Wessex and uh, the other kingdoms they've Mercia grown. has been strong. Mercia, East Anglia has uh, been kind of on and off. Northumbria mm -hmm. is eh, half and half maybe. So that was really cool that we get to hear the last kingdom in the love that and again you know it's like that's the name of the show i'm watching that's the name of the show wow that, like peter <laughs> moment from family i Guy. love that one like when there's like an album name and in the first song they say the album name in the song yeah and the lyrics i'm like oh yeah that's cool mm -hmm. <laughs> well that's what happened here that's when yeah young utrid um, comes with utrid and he hugs his dad and he's like i'm going to return to the church father and then we get our utrid's outro speech here we go. Got some great and music going too. We see Stiora and Citra Gear riding off through the fields. He says, yeah, he says we have peace, but the sense is that the truce will not last. And then we just see this with the beautiful music and the <laughs> Brita just grabbing a tree. Just ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, we shouldn't joke about it but it's it natural is, it's the way it's it's natural but it's very um where it is <laughs> to have that grunt come out of nowhere really like, <laughs> it's just like the beautiful music and everything just, ah! <laughs> just pooping out a baby you know oh my god but um but but it is like foreboding here because, by herself because now it's like we just got citra gear it doesn't seem like he's gonna be the bad guy you know who knows yeah but now it's like Frida is probably going to be the yeah. next also, bad guy season. Five. Also, Ethelhelm and Aelford are also shown running through. That's right. The well, I guess Ethelhelm's not running. He's just <laughs> Ethelhelm's wee <laughs> running. <laughs> no, he's like eating something, like all happy, like oh, I'm good. Just clearly evil scheming. Evil scheming, and Aelford's mm -hmm. all good in the palace of Winchester still, and um, he kind of there's a shot with him running up to Edward, and Edward kind of looks at him and then looks at the throne um foreshadowing and it says something like the brothers may be torn apart family is dispersed yes and then then Brita grunts and then we get like this is what gets me so excited for season five this amazing shot oh yeah first it shows ethelston like utrid like showing ethelston his sword and then it shows them like walking up to like a beautiful like up at the top of a hill and it's like from behind and it shows them overlooking. Yeah. Maybe is that, we just see Mufasa and Simba. Mufasa's like everything yeah. the light touches is yours. Yeah. <laughs> is our kingdom. <laughs> exactly. Simba's see, like, Oh, that's great. This shot though was incredible. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Again, like what you're saying is getting me really excited for season five is to see, where is this gonna lead? Because I want to see him raise freaking Ethelstan, man. The King of England. Oh, that's the King of England right there, and that's our boy Uhtred. So awesome way to end it to show that we're gonna get some Ethelstan Uhtred adventures. That great sunset, Ivar's music singing starts to kick in. Mm. It's, it's just, and we get the destiny is all. He says it with, with a little bit more emphasis. Yeah, a little more think. Oomph. Destiny, it's all. Yeah. It's all. And uh, man, oh man. But I'll tell you what. I want, in, the next, in season five, I don't want to just cut to him with Ethelstan being like old and like already had everything. I'm hoping he's at least like a teenager and we get some development. You know what I mean? I want to see these. I want to see him grow. Yes, yes. So absolutely. bad. I think we will, though, because I think we'll have to see, you know, Brita raising her evil spawn then, and Uhtred's raising his li good little spawn. So are they going to clash then, you know? Uh, that, that'll be pretty cool. Also, we haven't totally. seen Uhtred's youngest kid, the one who killed Gisela. We haven't seen him this season. That's, yeah, that's another thing we haven't seen. Um, I, I saw a few things. I saw that um, they, like, he might return in the future, and that they just didn't have enough. I think one of the directors said they just didn't have enough time. 
to there's so much to put in yeah there's so and many characters how could they introduce another character you know what i mean two whole books go into each season you know it's yeah. it's crazy that it's coherent like it just makes great. me wonder why they didn't like acknowledge it like at the table with um bayaka and hild yeah. early on like be like oh what about that third kid you had remember the one that killed your wife mm -hmm. which also made me wonder did he just abandon that kid because he blamed it for Gisela's death. Maybe that is a plot line they'll go into then and they didn't want to hit on it there. And he you just know? doesn't talk about it and they know like he, he doesn't talk about that kid or something. Yeah. Doesn't seem... Doesn't seem Uch... Eh, Uhtred, eh, no, he's know. abandoned a kid know. before. He abandoned the first young Uhtred. He did, didn't he? Yeah. But still, at, that, at this point though, I, I feel like he wouldn't do that, but maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? It's interesting. Interesting. But anyway, there's that's episode 10 and there is season 4. If you stuck with all 10 episodes with us, then congratulations, you win nothing because we don't have anything to give you. But uh, we do appreciate you listening and we have been having a lot of fun with these. How would you get there? Flash, flash drive, maybe flash drive? Teal flash is that drive? Anybody, is this anybody's flash drive? Well, it's, it's, no? a, it's the prize. Okay. You can have the cap. Oh, to the flash, flash drive. <laughs> Not the whole thing. No, 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 no. Can't no. do it. <laughs> anyway, any final thoughts as uh, we end season ten talk? No, our season episode ten talk. Yeah, I mean it's it's really cool. Uh, you know, we'll get more into it in our final review here. Like we said at the beginning, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we go more into the whole season, but solid episode or the season as a whole, I guess. Yeah, we won't get into the nitty gritty as much. Yeah, yeah, but. for sure. But. Uh, a little anticlimactic, like we said at the beginning, but still a lot of cool beats in it. A lot of a lot of great setup that we're gonna get. A lot of I great think. dialogue. Yeah, the dialogue kills it. I think. Yeah, yeah, a lot of really good scenes, and I do think the character development is phenomenal. Um, the yeah, the storyline is a little bit anticlimactic. Yeah, I, I will admit. I will admit. Still good though. Still yeah. really really good. Do you have a best bro moment from the episode? It's got to be this. It's got to be Uhtred helping Edward. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not letting him go through that decision. Yeah, that was... I had three. I was kind of tossed around. Mine was either pure leg with the hug, Uhtred yes. making decision, or actually, what I think I'm going to pick is the Uhtred gang still believing in Uhtred, even though they Ooh, found yeah. the sword. That's what I'm going to go with. They found okay, the cool. sword, and even when Edward drops the sword onto the table... You know, kind of like sort of symbolizing while well, he's dead, finished. They all yeah. sort of crowd around and they're like, no, nah, you know, he's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you that one. That's cool. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to go with, officially going to go with Uhtred going in so Edward doesn't have to make that decision. I mean, he's done so much for Edward and uh, Alfred's family, but. Um, he still loses a bro point when he smacks Osforth, though. So. He does. He does lose that bro point. <laughs> We're going to have to send Alexander Draymond an email. Let him know. <laughs> <laughs> he lost that bro point. <laughs> that might have took him out of the, the final, you know, the final award here. But best moment from the episode. My best moment is just seeing Ethelston and Uhtred overlooking. Because that moment has just been stuck in my head ever since I, I finished the season. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, when I think of season five, that's what I see. Yeah. And it makes me so excited. Absolutely. Um. Since you said that, though, I, that was one of mine. I'm going to go okay. with Citrigear's shield wall call. His second cool. one where he just pulls it from the gut. You know what I mean? Um, As Runa Tempte said, um, when, when he was talking about his scream before fighting Uhtred, he said, like, it came from, like, the earth and, the, you know, and nature and the gods, yeah. like, that scream. Very you know, that's spiritual. what in Ubba's head. Which I thought was awesome. If you haven't talked or seen our talk with with Runa Tempte, who plays Abba, it was a just a really enlightening and fascinating oh, chat we had so with him. Good. He so good. he really goes into the nitty gritty about how he portrayed Abba, Abba's mindset. Um, just cool stories, man. It was a really good one. So check that one out. And yeah, anything else, Steve? From uh, episode 10 no that's it we see most of the people who listen to our channel watch our episodes and download from podcasts most of you aren't subscribed so if you could please subscribe that way you always know what we've got coming out that'd be great 
Uh, that really helps us then know too, then the people, what, you know, episodes they really like and you know, what things they like. So let us know too, in the comments, your best bro moment, your best moment from the episode. What would you rank this episode zero to 10, zero being no pain at all. 10 being the most, the most pain you've ever felt in your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So let us know in the comments too. join the discussion, follow us on Instagram, uh, the Screen Chronicles underscore Facebook, just the Screen Chronicles. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but stay in touch. We are going to put out our final review and we're going to have Season our four. awards day, our, our class superlatives. <laughs> Season four superlatives. For Season four of The Last Kingdom. So yeah, but thanks everyone for sticking around. Uh, it's been great. I'm Steve, this is Colby. And Destiny, Destiny is all. Is all. can blame it all on me i was wrong and i just can't live without you go be come back blame it all on me i was wrong and i just can't live without you come back